This instruction manual has been designed to be used by persons in the construction trade. It's assumed that construction procedures accepted by the industry will be followed in areas not detailed and for general safety precautions. We realize that no two installations are the same, and if any questions should arise on your particular installation, please feel free to call 262-723-6869 and ask for customer service. Out of state, call toll free 800-558-5974. Due to continuing development to improve our doors, specifications are subject to change at any time without notice. Welcome to Wilson Doors. Wisconsin-based Wilson Doors is the leading U.S. manufacturer of premium aluminum bifold doors, steel bottom rolling doors, economical steel bifold doors, and single panel hydraulic doors. Applications range from aircraft hangars, industrial buildings, and convention centers to museums, showrooms, and even eco-friendly homes. Beyond North America, our extraordinary specialty doors are shipped all over the globe, from Iceland to Australia. Statements in this video preceded by the following words are of special significance. Warning means there's the possibility of personal injury to you or others. Caution means there's the possibility of damage to the door. We recommend that you take special notice of these statements. Listen to the instructions carefully before proceeding with door assembly. For the successful completion of the installation process, Wilson Doors recommends the following tools and equipment. Forklift or crane for unloading and lifting door into place. It should be capable of lifting two feet higher than overall height of door. For doors over 60 feet wide, a crane is recommended. Transit level. Wrenches. 7 16 combination, 9 16 combination, 5 8 combination, 3 quarter combination, 1 and 1 8 combination on large doors. 1 quarter drive ratchet. 7 16 socket. 1 half drive ratchet. 1 half socket. 9 16 socket, 3 quarter socket, 1 and 1 8 socket on large doors, 9 16 deep socket, straight blade screwdriver, wire cutter, pliers, Allen wrenches, tape ruler, 2 C clamps or C clamp vice grips, 1 dozen 1 quarter inch exterior plastic wire ties, 2 2 by 4 by 12 pieces of wood for each top hinge of your door. Preparing the opening. The surface in front of the door opening should be cleared of all obstacles and be as level as possible for a distance of two feet farther than that of the height of the door. The header should be ready for the door when it arrives per specification sent out with original order. If any question should arise, please call the office at 800-558-5974 and ask for customer service. Please have your building ready for the door when it arrives. Again, if you have any questions, call. The jam track, if specified to be an H-beam, should be in place and ready for the door. Take care to set jam flush with header or poor seal will occur at the top of the door in the jam area. See Figure 2. If the jam track is to receive an angle iron, be sure it's set flush and tight up to header. If attaching angle to wood, do not use lag bolts. Use only carriage bolts on 20-inch centers. See Figure 3, page 11. Note, we strongly recommend that the sheeting be left completely off the end wall where door will be installed. The door will be sheeted after it's stood up and building sheeting can easily be attached at that time. Unloading and placing frames in place. You'll need a forklift or overhead lifting device of some sort to lift the door frames off the trailer. Use a lifting device that will handle the weight of the door and will lift two feet higher than the top of the hinge. It can also be used later to stand the door in place. Note, doors 40 feet by 14 feet and smaller can be unloaded by hand using a crew of six men. Doors can be built in full width without being spliced if shipping allows. If your door was built without being spliced, you'll need a fork truck to handle unloading. The door frames are marked on the outside ends as to their location viewed from the outside looking in. See Figure 4. Start with the bottom first. 
preferably the section with the service door if so equipped, and lay it in place face down in front of the opening with the bottom roller up to the track and wind pin hooked on backside. See Figure 5. Do the same with the other bottom section. Before bolting sections together, note that on the bottom sections, the center drive shaft must be slid in place, keeping the cable tubes in line from one door section to the next. See Figure 6. Note, some doors are shipped without being spliced in width, so the above assembly will not be required. Caution, the top sections can now be placed in their respective positions. Door Assembly Step 1. If door is not spliced in height, proceed to Step 2. Doors that are spliced in height will require assembly of the sections. Align the frames that go together and slide them together being sure no foreign material gets on the mating surfaces. Take care to keep frames sliding together evenly, or in other words, don't let one end slide all the way in before the other. See Figure 7. Once together, check for bowing and then bolt together. See Figure 8. The flathead bolts on the front side door can be installed after the door is standing in the opening. See Figure 9. Step 2. Pull bottom sections together and start aligning splice bolt holes and installing bolts. Care should be taken to be sure all splice plates are clean and all burrs removed. All bolts require flat washers on both sides. See Figure 10, page 15. Do not tighten any bolts until all are started. Torque bolts to recommended specification. For recommended torque, see figure 11 on page 15 in the manual. Hinging top to bottom. Remove hinge pins at center fold of door. Slide top section up to bottom section so hinges line up and reinstall hinge pins. Note, it's recommended that the hinge be lubricated with lithium grease. To simplify installation of cotter key and hinge pin, be sure hole in pin is parallel with door. Be careful no foreign material gets between sections or difficulty may occur in aligning hinges. See Figure 12. Note, it's sometimes helpful to lift the top of top section to align hinges. In some cases, it may also be necessary to loosen hinges in order to align and then re-tighten after hinge pins are installed. Install cotter key in hinge pin and bend end over. See Figure 13. Bolting top section together. Clean splice plates on top sections and deburr if necessary. Bolt together as in Part A. Installing turnbuckles. If door is not equipped with wind load trusses, proceed to the next step. Lay turnbuckles out and note letters on plates. Locate trusses on the door and note letters on ends at center splice. See Figure 14. Install turnbuckles on corresponding trusses matching letters and tighten bolts using torque chart in Figure 11. Installing set screws. The turnbuckle adjustment will be made after the door is running but before it's sheeted. Feeding lift cables. Note. Doors equipped with auto locks will have to have the drive shaft turned until the factory installed lock is completely closed. On larger doors, 55 feet wide and up with bottom truss, standing with the drive shaft in front of you and facing the inside of the building, tube opening up, feed the lift cable through the tube opening facing you into cable guard, then pull until the button on the end of the cable is up tight to the tube. See figure 16 and 17. Repeat this for each lift cable. Smaller doors without bottom truss, 54 feet wide and less. Standing with a drive shaft in front of you and facing the outside of the building, tube opening up, feed the lift cable through the tube facing you into the cable guard, then pull until the button on the end of the cable is up tight to the tube. See figure 18. Repeat this for each lift cable. Note, if needed, a small amount of grease on end of cable going into tube will make cable easier to feed. Attaching motor gearbox. Warning, motor is not waterproof. Motor should not be exposed to rain or snow. 
Keep motor and electrical controls covered with a plastic trash bag until door sheeting is complete and building is enclosed. Remove four bolts holding motor plate on door. Place motor gearbox in place on top of plates and reinstall bolts previously removed. See Figure 19. Do not tighten bolts at this time. Loosen and be sure chain slack adjuster is at the lowest point of travel. Install the chain, being sure to turn the drive shaft so the lift cables come out of tube at the proper location. See Figure 20, page 19. Warning! The chain is a vital link in the drive mechanism. It's been designed with a sufficient safety factor to perform under normal conditions. However, the chain should be inspected for irregularities before installing. If any should exist, do not use. Failure of the chain could result in the door falling, causing bodily and or property damage. Care should be taken when installing master links. If damage should occur when attempting to install, do not operate door before replacing. Start to tighten chain adjuster until most of the slack is removed. Align chain sprockets if necessary. Move only sprocket on drive shaft. See Figure 21. Do not move sprocket on gearbox. Adjust chain again to be sure it's snug and tighten as needed. See Figure 22, page 20. Warning! Chains will loosen considerably during initial operation and should be rechecked often during the first months of operation. Note: All doors have at least two drive chains for redundancy. When tightening dual chains on the same gearbox, it's sometimes difficult to get the same tension on both chains due to indexing of the sprockets and gearbox shafts. This is acceptable as long as the chains are tightened so the slack is even on opposite sides of chains. Warning: Check that all sprocket set screws are tight. Caution: A loose or missing set screw could cause drive key to fall out, letting door fall if open. Recheck before proceeding to next step. Bolting on truss braces. If your door is not equipped with a truss, proceed to the next step. On some doors with wind load trusses, the braces on the bottom truss are bolted on rather than welded for shipping purposes. If they're welded on, proceed to the next step. If the braces are the bolt-on style, they'll be found in the parts box along with fasteners. Note the letters on the braces. Locate the bottom truss on the door and note the letters by the pre-drilled holes and install and tighten bolts. See Figure 23. For recommended torque, see Figure 11 on page 15 in the manual. Attaching Electrical Controls Remove two quarter-inch bolts from limit switch mounting bracket. Loosen set screw on open end of drive coupler. Slide drive tube over gearbox shaft. See Figure 24, page 21. Install mounting bolts back in bracket and align limit switch shaft with gearbox shaft. Tighten limit switch mounting bolts and recheck alignment of shafts. Tighten both drive tube clamps. Caution! A loose or missing coupler could cause failure of limit switch to function in both the up and down travel, severely damaging the door. You're now ready to install the chain guard. Loosen bolts from guard mounting bracket and install guard over chain. Being sure guard is not touching anything, tighten mounting bolts. See Figure 25. Move control box inside building and out of the way for now. Lock cables and lock adjustments. Note, doors with auto locks do not have lock switches. Proceed to next step. Lift cables. Note. If door is equipped with optional auto lock, this adjustment is completed later. The kickouts, which are located at the center of the door directly above the lift cables as they come off the drive shaft, must have the cotter keys removed from their side. See Figure 31, page 24. The cotter keys may be discarded. Be sure that you remove the entire cotter key or damage to the door could occur. They're for shipping only. Below the kickouts are stops that prevent the long kickout arms from cutting into the bottom half of the door when the door opens. These outer stops have bolts installed backwards for shipping purposes only and will have to be reversed before the door is operated. Failure to do this will result in damage to the door. See Figure 34, page 25. Note: 
Some very large doors may have bolts at each stop. Check to make sure the kickouts swing freely and do not hang up at all. Stand the kickouts up and lay the lift cables on them. See Figure 33, page 24. Be sure lift cables are free to pull away from the door. Slide two cable clamps over the cable and feed the cable through the pickup on top hinge. Slide a clamp up as close to pickup as possible and slide the second clamp one and one half inches lower and tighten. See figure 35 and 36. If door is laid out on flat level ground and hinges will be attaching to bottom of header, the cables may be adjusted on the ground at this time. Start at one end of the door and pull lift cables so that at the kickout it will not lift over fingers but yet is not tight, putting pressure on it. Next, check dimensions on cable from door structural and set other cables the same. Note, be sure drive shaft is positioned correctly before attempting to adjust the cables on the ground. Auto lock doors are different than manual lock doors and are adjusted later. Warning, while door is still on the ground, go over entire door and check for bolts that may have come loose during shipping or were omitted during assembly. Standing into opening and attach hinges. Centering door. Measure the overlap of the bottom rollers on each side of door. Slide door whichever way is needed to center it. See figure 37. Care should be taken not to rack door when sliding. Within plus or minus 1 8 inch is acceptable. Auto lock doors are very sensitive to centering. Take extra care on doors with this option. Block bottom. Block bottom of door 3 inches above finished floor. Block only where door has vertical members. Two standard 2x4s stacked on top of each other about 12 to 14 inches long work well. The number of hinges on the top of the door is a good indication of how many places it should be blocked at the bottom. See figure 38. When blocking door with bottom truss, be careful not to put spacers on any weldments, causing door to be higher than 3 inches. Note, it's understood the cement will not hold a steady grade across the full width of the door, and the blocking of the door is just a starting point to stand the door on. Standing door. Doors 44 feet by 14 feet and smaller can be stood in place by hand. Seven men or on smaller doors less can lift a door easily. On larger doors, a forklift or crane that can handle the weight and lift at least two feet higher than the top of the hinges should be used. Helpful hint. While the door is still on the ground, it would be easier to attach the side seal to the door. See paragraph F under Sheeting and Insulating, page 49. If lifting by hand, lift from center of the door. If by forklift or crane, spread lifting points a reasonable distance for the span of the door, but stay next to the verticals and lift and move in towards the building at the same time. Watch bottom cord of door. If it lifts off blocks at center, you're lifting too much and should move in toward building. See Figure 40. Caution. Care should be taken by equipment operator not to jerk or loosen tension at lift points or damage to door could result. Be as smooth as possible. Clamp door as necessary to secure before continuing. Note, it may be necessary to push door open to get lock cams inside H-beam jams when so equipped. Level and plumbing door. There are other ways to plumb the door, but we feel the following is the most accurate. Measure by hooking ruler on bottom of the top channel next to a vertical that has a hinge at top and shoot with a transit. See figure 42, page 29. Once door is leveled, go back and check top section for center and alignment with jam. Remember on auto lock doors, this is very important to be centered. Determine how much, if any, the door is racked by viewing the door at the edge with track. Keep top of door centered by pulling one way or the other. Remember, the door is stacked on the wood blocks at the bottom and will straighten itself somewhat once hanging from the top hinges. Warning: When centering door, make certain there is proper clearance between door and building sheeting trim at top and sides. Check Wilson print or call 800-558-5974.